Good evening guys, how are we doing? Um, we are back this evening. It is Tuesday the 17th of April. Uh, we're kind of wrapping up for the, for the evening after a, a very, very long day. Um, I've been here since 7 a.m. I think you've been going since about 7 a.m. Yeah, as yeah, well. about quarter two, yeah. Yeah, pretty productive day. Um, hectic, yeah, to be honest. I was doing a lot yeah. of training today. So I um, trained three different businesses um, today. Spent most of the day with a financial planning and real estate firm down in Varsity. Yes. Um, had four really good hours down there. Okay, awesome. Um, I've been locked away in this office today with the with the team, which has been really, really productive. Um, everybody's been on the phone, smashing the dials out, a lot of connects, um, a lot of appointments being booked and sat. Um, really, really good uh, good energy here in, uh, in the office. So tonight, guys, it's going to be a little bit quick fire. Uh, we've got, what have we got there, Courtney? Six questions that have been sent in again. And um, these ones are more so based around our specific training that we provide. So whether that's um, sales training one on one, whether it's the boot camps that we offer, whether it be the digital training, or whether it be the the corporate training, the the twelve twenty six or, or fifty two week training program. So if you've got any questions yourself um, with regards to those types of things, feel free to to write a little message in there, and we will do our best to answer them. And we will always prioritise your questions that come in on here as well. So. Um, Courtney, uh, you want us to wait until a few more people are connected before we dive into the questions, or should we crack on? Crack on. Got anything to add, JC? No, no, not at all. I just, um, I just want to thank everybody um, for the engagement we do get in these videos. Um, it's the reason we keep doing it. You know, this business has always constantly grown and evolved in accordance with what our customers have requested from us. So, um, these were the questions that we've received. This is the information you guys are asking for. But the reality is that if you want your questions answered, you have to be brave enough to put those questions forward. Hey, um, Danny, story, good to see you. Um, if you do have things specifically that you're looking for assistance with, now that can be in sales, negotiation, business, yes, but it also can just be in life, mindset, um, you know, performance thinking. So be confident, put yourself a, a question in here, um, and we'll make sure we give you an open and honest answer at all times. You'll definitely sure. get that from us. Alrighty, uh, first first question, uh, we've, we've got them written in front of us today. So. Is a sales boot camp more or less effective than taking an online course? Alrighty, lead us away. <laughs> this is where I answer the question like a politician. So, <laughs> is a sales boot camp, is, this, is physical, face to face, classroom based training um, more or less effective than taking an online course? I think that really depends on who you are as a person. So, with me as an individual, um, I am not overly conducive to classroom learning for a couple of reasons. Number one, I believe it's all about me. So, I spend half of the class talking and not listening to the teacher because I have a wide range of opinions or questions that I want answered so when it comes to that style of learning I'm a lot better in doing it one-to-one -one with whoever it is that I'm looking to obtain the guidance from so um, I personally much prefer online learning because I can do it at my own time in my own um, you know sort of pace up in my own domain so with me a lot of people will know I'm very much a morning person generally up and out of bed by sort of 4 35 o'clock in the morning my mornings are highly productive um, and it's at that point of my day when I prefer to learn. Well, I don't know of a boot camp or a class that starts at 5.30 in the morning for um, you know elite thinkers or people that are looking to grow their business or learn how to master the art of sales and negotiation. So um, I also, as many people don't know, I, I don't actually drink or, or party or anything like that. So my evenings, Friday nights are a lot of fun in my house. I'm normally reading a book or um, you know watching some online content. So. For me personally, I prefer online learning. It's available to me 24 7, 365, um, and I can reference it as and when I'm having any difficulty in my day to day operations. So, okay. for me personally, I prefer the online. Beautiful. Um, I will always be the yin to Jack's yang. Um, so, uh, as much as I do em embrace the digital age, and I, th I think uh, it, it means that we can learn 24 7, 365, I think it's fantastic. Uh, we've developed an online course just for that, so people can actually jump onto their mobile phone, their iPad, their, their tablet, whatever it is, and train at their leisure. Um, I like the face-to-face -face interaction from a from a coaching perspective um, I personally feel that I get more out of people when I'm doing the one-to-one -one coaching um, I can really kind of open them up and get deep down into the, to the root cause of what's going to allow them to take action um, however if you're in business and you're wanting to scale a business 
I think it's um, undoubtedly the way that we have to go. We have to digitalize whatever we've got up here and we have to document it in a, to give us an ability to scale it some way, uh, shape or form. Yeah. Um, you just don't want to lose that personal touch with your clients. Um, anyone that's had any interaction with us over the years, I like to think one thing you will say about us is that we've got fantastic customer service and, and back-end support um, and that is something that we invest an awful lot of time and, and money in as well. Yeah, so. I mean, I've got Bo Graham with us at the moment. Bo, you've done a lot of face-to-face -face training with me, my friend, um, whether it was at Global Work and Travel, um, Paragon Elite, um, before that. Um, Sun Edison, talk, talk to me a little bit like if I was to take the content that I'd shared with you and I feel like we had some massive progression when we were working together in office, would you prefer that content to now be available to you if you'd have invested in an online course and you still had that content available now in your new role and in any role you go to in the future, do you think that's more beneficial than just having gone through one day in one class once? Yeah, perfect. Um, On that question as well, whilst we're asking for a little bit of feedback, uh, we're always innovating, we're always adapting our online content. We call it our liquid library. So the, the information that we've got in our training now, we're, we're always adding to it. What would you guys like to see uh, from a business or sales perspective in a digital format. If you needed something right now or, or 10 o'clock at night, you just had a bit of inspiration, you've just, the pennies dropped that you want to start a business, what do you want to be able to access instantly? Yeah. Um, and we'll start to create that sort of content for you guys as well. I think the reason that people would choose a sales bootcamp, because what our experience has shown us is that seven out of 10 people um, that utilize our services will do so inside the sales bootcamp, but yeah. only three of the 10 of them will do that through digital sales training. So the vast majority of the reason is not only because they get to ask questions and feel like the content personalized to them but also a lot of people do enjoy the collaboration um, that comes from you know boot sales boot camp style learning so um, I think being able to bounce ideas off of others is another reason people would prefer to do it yeah. in groups so sure. I think I think to combine the two I don't think they have to go exclusive either I think um, the way I've I've learned this is just on a personal level is that I like the initial boot camp six seven, eight hours worth of sales content, sales training. I absorb as much as possible, but it's it's hard to take all of that away with you and implement the next day. So then to have all of that information available for me for six, 12, 18 months or however long the program is, that that's worked really well for me on a personal, sure. not, not just with our training, but other, sure. other information and education Definitely. that I absorb as well. I think Rome wasn't built in a day. And if I look at, um, you know, if, if we talk about boot camps from a fitness perspective, um, for me, yeah. Yes, I love having the personal trainer there with me. And whenever I go back to it to a gym, you know, I look at four or five times in my life when I've gone back and I've gone, right, it's January, I'm gonna get on a diet, I'm gonna lose some weight, I'm gonna get in shape. I love having the personal trainer there for three, four, five sessions because they create a plan, they create accountability, yeah. they show me the methods or the techniques to get the results I'm aiming for. But what I love is they leave me with a plan. Yeah. They actually write me a, a workout program that then I keep or to me that's the digital version for sure if you can respect where I'm coming from so um, all right question we should, um, we should not actually check guys can you hear us okay um, the, the volume is okay just give us a quick thumbs up or a yes if you can hear us um, if you need to move closer yeah. or shout up hey um, Preston good to have you with us Matt Walters um, checking in from Finland I believe um, good to have you with us my friend um, Matt what are you doing for a living now are you still in sales um, since we last caught up um, hope you're still playing cricket as well hope you're doing well um, Glenn's Peg, always a pleasure. Um, hope that the little bit of sunshine that we were getting in the UK is still lasting. Um, let's get into the second question. Are we getting a few thumbs up there? Is everybody saying that they can hear us okay? There's a few things coming up that I've never even seen before. Have they got more emojis up on there? I, <laughs> no I can't keep up. Cool. Um, question number two. When you do corporate coaching, is it different from individual coaching? Yeah, massively. I mean, I'll toss it into you first. Yeah, okay. Um, for me, it it kind of starts at your corporate coaching, whatever that really means, on on a grander scale, where you start to teach conceptual sales and you start to um, start to teach on a, on a macro scale and then within the businesses that we consult with you then start to tailor the specific training programs down to individuals so we start with um, a big um, I guess icebreaker you would call it getting to know the teams we've obviously got to sell ourselves to the team some people come in and they get a little bit nervous thinking that we're trying to take their jobs trust us we're not um, we want to come in and we want to educate you and then you go and perform to the best of your ability so we get to know you we allow you to get to 
knowers at the same time. Um, and then we would look to break that big group down into smaller groups, pairs and then individuals. And we can really work specifically on what you need to work on. So it is slightly different overall, I think. Yeah, for um, sure, for sure. Hey, uh, David Ball, um, thank you very much, mate. Love your work too. Um, hey, Polly Cable, you, mate? glad you can hear us. Um, Holly's at Autoguru? She is at Autoguru. Yeah, cool. She's um she was dressed as a Teletubby um on, on Friday, which <laughs> wow. was which was phenomenal. Um <laughs> Holly, just give us a, a quick note in there, how are you getting on um with work at the moment? What's the biggest challenge that you're facing? We might be able to address it. Um okay, question. When when you, I do corporate coaching, is it different from individual coaching? Absolutely. Um there's no denying that looking to educate a magnitude of people at the same time is always going to be slightly different because I feel it's more generic and it's more conceptual. When I'm dealing with Mr. Joe Bloggs, I'm looking at what is Joe's strength? What are Joe's areas he needs to improve? What are the challenges he's facing? What are his ambitions? What are his dreams? And every piece of the content we're sharing is singularly and solely focused on Joe. Whereas when we're going into a corporate environment, what we really are teaching is business, the kind of the sales dynamics in their entirety. So of course we'll always personalize it back to that business, their product or service, but the reality is I can't make it just about Joe or just about Jan or just about Bob because at this stage I need to give everybody the information um, and in one phrase, you know, or and or in one session. I so yeah, I was about to say, Holly, you're you're a perfect example of this right now. Um, I've been training. Well, we've been with with Holly's company for almost four years, I think now. But we've we've just entered a, another another thirteen week training program, and we're at week three of that. Um, Holly is in uh, an inbound capacity, so I've been training on a grander scale for the for the whole of her group. But some of the the, the topics that I've been covering and not really applicable to Holly's role specifically. So mm -hmm. she's asked me, and she's actually written it right there as well, that building rapport um, with specific mechanics and workshops is something that we're looking to work on. And I actually finished writing that training program for you and the inbound agents today, Holly, as well. So uh, awesome. uh, I'm glad, what you glad you to give you a laugh. You did give me a good laugh. I even spoke about it with my wife when I got home. So yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so yeah, I think what Ryan said though is you really build, you go individual, group slash conceptual back to individual. So first of all, before we'll ever try and educate anybody, thank you, Colin, before you ever try and educate anybody, I think you need to know who they are as a person. So generally our first hour, uh, potentially an hour and a half, depending on the size of your organization. Most of the businesses we deal with, we tend to have about 30 to 40 staff. Um, so we'll, we'll just get to know you, we'll break the ice, we'll find out a little bit about what your biggest phobia is, what your number one goal in life is, what your proudest achievement is, um, what you wanna get out of our training, um, and also why you love the business that you work for. Once we've understood you as people, now we'll, we'll spend the next approximately eight hours um, in as large a group as possible distributing conceptual sales information. Then we begin to work those groups down to little groups of two, three, four, um, and we start to run more workshop style training where we'll just focus on an individual subject, call it building rapport, handling objections, um, you know, how to deliver a presentation, features and benefits, logic and motion, whatever that might be, and then find Finally, we'll encapsulate the remainder of our program around one-to-one -one training. That will be more practical. We will literally sit with you on phone calls. We will either grab recordings of calls or alternatively do a role-play based call with you. And then we'll take your presentation, dissect it, break it down, build it back up, focus on what you're doing well, um, and ultimately decide on what are the things that you need to change or improve within that. So um, corporate coaching, corporate training is something that we really specialize in. That's exactly where our business is heading. Um, now represents nearly 50% of our revenue actually comes from our corporate training, not from the recruitment we were previously so well known for. Um, but more than anything, businesses are moving towards using our digital training programs because it's all well and good bringing myself and Ryan in for, you know, call it 52 hours into your business and that might be four hours a week over three months but we come at a premium you know you have to in, uh, make an investment of $550 per hour for our time for people who are listening from the UK that's just about 300 pounds per hour to bring us in as people um, which is great we, we live up to the expectation and we deliver value against that investment but it's only a day it's only two days and the reality is, let's say you had somebody who was sick um, or disengaged on that day and they don't not only acquire but have the ability to implement the information, then that investment hasn't served value for that individual. Instead, 
Having our digital training program, having our liquid library means that on any day, at any time, any challenge that's being faced by your sales team, you have the ability to be able to go on, watch the appropriate videos, complete the kinesthetic assessment tools, and feel more armed and equipped to be able to go and deal with that challenge next time it arises. Easy, easy. Keep the questions coming, guys, as well. Um, these are these are the best types of questions. We can answer them there and then for you um, live. So yeah. Perfect. Good. Holly, I love you. I love the fact you like going back through your online content and noticing that the frequency in which you log in is, is actually conducive to why you're <coughs> becoming one of the better performers in, in what you do. Um, you asked a question about building rapport quickly with busy um, workshop owners. You need to conform to their desires. Their desire is to not to have moments of their time ineffectively utilized. So what I would do is be very proactive in suggesting, I'm sure like every other workshop owner I speak to, you're probably short on time today, so let me keep this efficient. With 60 seconds, I'd love to share an idea with you. Got a minute. Use that 60 seconds effectively. If you wanna build rapport, we always use the acronym FORD. Ford is something you're going to share in commonality with almost any other human being. You will love your family, you will have an occupation, you will have recreational desires, and you will have dreams. One really quick tip if you want to start find a way into Ford is to actually dive in through occupation. Okay, When you're calling the workshop owner, one thing you're looking to understand is how operationally involved are they? Do they manage their own accounts and books? Do they manage their own marketing? So the way I would do that is by explaining what I love about my job is I get to help busy workshop owners like yourself to massively grow their organization through having high volumes of inbound inquiries and or sales made on behalf of your organization through an external third party such as Autoguru. So you're talking about your occupation and what you love about it, which is indirectly selling the business you work for, but you could say, well, less about me, more about you. What is your role on a day-to-day -day basis? Straight away, you've peeled back one layer of the onion. Now you can start diving into their family and their dreams, which will be the emotion that will encapsulate the decision they're gonna to make to use your business. I think as well, um, Holly, just on that, from a, from a business owner's perspective, and we know, um, I've worked with you personally quite closely over the last few months, um, the, the workshop owners, they're, they're covered in grease, they're covered in oil, they're stuck underneath a car. Um, just appreciating their time, that one line that, that Jack put in there as well, a busy business owner like yourself, um, just respecting them on every single call. So listen, I'm gonna keep this really efficient for you, but I've got another booking for you. I've got some more money, I've got some more revenue coming for you. Just be that voice that they are always happy to hear from, for sure. regardless of, of the whatever you're ringing them about. It might not always be that you've got a booking for them, it might not always be something that's going to generate revenue for them, but be the person that's memorable to them every single time. Yeah. And if you want, you could take that one step further and fluff their ego first. You know, you could say to them, um, look, I have to do a little bit of research about you online. I can see that you're, you probably have an exhaustive amount of clients. So with a busy business owner like yourself, what I'd love to do is to take 30 seconds to share an idea with you. Well, if you tell me that my business is great, you've got my attention to start with. Every business owner likes being told how good they are. So, um, Magnus, how can you stay out on such a high frequency <laughs> consistently without dipping down? Are you talking about how can we or how can you? So, just clarify that question, Magnus. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say also congratulations to Magnus. Um, he was at Park Run with me on Saturday um, and it was his first Park Run and he absolutely smashed it. He, he played you? himself down before um, and then he comfortably beat my, me and my dog. Um, so, Fair play to you, Magnus. Looking forward to, to giving you a good go, maybe minus the dog this, this Saturday. Good job. Like that. You're more than welcome, Holly. No problems at all. Um, diving into question three then, and we'll come back to Magnus at the end of that. Um, oh, yeah. What is NLP sales training? Um, did I take the rain here? Yes, you first, yeah. Cool, okay. NLP is an acronym that stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, breaking those words down, neuro means brain, linguistic means language, and programming is a system. So fundamentally, NLP sales training is a brain language system, okay? Um, this was a study started in 1971 by two guys called John Grinder and Richard Bandler out of the University of California. Um, took those guys th over 30 years to have their work scientifically appreciated. So um, in the late 2000s, it was formally inducted as a scientific method and it is now universally appreciated that if you can control your language, you can control your life. But to be able to really encapsulate and understand how to utilize NLP to your benefit in a sales capacity, you need to understand that there are three forms of dialogue. There is an inbound neuro-linguistic, and that is what you hear and the actions that you take against what you hear. There is an outbound dialogue, which is what you say to the world, what physically leaves your mouth 
and the energy that you put out into the universe. Now, this is the concept of driving up to the, the traffic light when you're late for work and the pessimistic or glass half empty <coughs> person says, don't go red, don't go red, don't go red, don't go red. The only thing they are attracting into the world is a red light. The glass half full optimistic person says, stay green, stay green, stay green, stay green. You're asking for the exact same thing but you're asking for it in a significantly different way. That is outbound neuro-linguistics. So one thing in our office that we've banned are words like should, would, could, might, maybe, possibly, potentially, perhaps it would be nice if I would like, I want, or wouldn't it be great. We feel they are all words of procrastinators. They are words of creatures of circumstance, people who the universe is happening to them, not they are happening to the universe. So instead, we use words like can, will, do, shall, have, must, am. And what you'll find is in your sales presentation, when you start speaking in absolutes with that language that you will start to get a far greater response from your client but also in your life if you stop saying ah oh, I should but I will you'll start to see that what you are choosing or desiring to do becomes a reality your um, ideas um, become actions and your actions create results. The mm. third and final form of dialogue is internal. Now this is probably the most important in sales is because in sales, salespeople, they're very good talkers. They love to talk and they're good at it. It's where they're most confident. One thing they're not fantastic at is listening. Um, but you need to be able to use two ears and, and one mouth if you're going to be highly effective in negotiation and consultation. So recognizing that an internal dialogue is a conversation that a human being has with themselves. Now, every single person watching this video talks to themselves. If you don't, you probably need to head to a doctor, okay? Because the average Western human being should spend about three and a half to four hours per day talking to themselves. In that four hours a day, you're actually going to ask yourself approximately 1,800 questions. The question you're asking yourself right now is, do I ask myself that many questions? The question that follows that is, well, what questions do I ask myself? As you can start to see, both of those are questions. So if you can control the questions that you ask yourself, you'll control the answers you receive, control the answers, control the outcomes, control your language, control your life. But in quite a comprehensive summary, where that conforms back to NLP sales training, is that you need to respect the fact that your customer's decisions are going to be made in their internal dialogue. Only in conversation with self will they decide if they do or don't wish to invest in your product or service. So if all you're doing is talk, 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 and you do not create capacity for silence, then you do not give the customer the option or the ability to conversate with self. Therefore, they simply cannot decide so what they will do is say, sounds great, Jack, but can I have a day or a week to think about it? And then I'll let you know if it's something I want to do. It's not because they need a day or a week. It's just because you haven't shut up. So a lot of people, especially in sales, feel uncomfortable in silence. You need to realize there is a lot of power in that silence. And only in the silence are you creating capacity for customers to make decisions. Beautiful. Um, not really a lot to add for that, Jack's Sorry, math, I ran, uh, way, way, way more of an expert on that than, yeah. than I am. I, I find I, I do find NLP absolutely fa uh, fascinating. Um, in its most simplistic term, if I take it back to a park run example, um, you get to three and a half, four k in. You can keep saying to yourself, "Don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop!" The only word I'm really resonating there is the word "stop." Um, as opposed to say, I, I will finish this. I will finish keep this. Going, I will keep finish. Going, keep, keep, running, keep running. Keep yeah. running. Keep running. That that just in layman's terms, if, if that makes sense to some other people as well. So um, from from a sales perspective, um, we always talk about the terminology we use on an introduction. Um, we wanna remove the words, can't, uh, oh yeah, can't complain. So yeah, Ryan ISR, how you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks yourself. Yeah, not too bad, too bad. Double negatives, we don't wanna be using those words at the start of a phone call or an interaction. Why, why are you not too bad? Yeah, I'm all right, fair to middling, can't complain. So you're having a pretty shit day, all in all. I don't wanna hear that. What if I, if I meet you for the first time, and you go, mate, I'm fantastic actually, thanks for asking. Magnus just asked us, why have we always got so much energy about us? Do you then believe that we enjoy the job that we do on the back of that? It's because we actually do enjoy this mm -hmm. job. Now you might not enjoy the job that you're doing right now, but if your customer feels that from you, do they wanna do business with you? Probably not. So you either need to look for another job or you need to learn how to control your own headspace and the language that you're using internally and then verbalizing externally. For sure. One more thing to add off the back of that then. In terms of what is 
NLP sales training and kind of how do you use it in the sales capacity. Um, what Ryan's just said is exactly right. It's the language that you use. If you ask somebody a question, they say yes, and you say no worries, no problem, no stress. All I heard was worry, problem, stress. Um, so instead say, great, fantastic, brilliant, amazing, superb, wonderful. Um, those words are positive reinforcements, positive affirmations, and make somebody feel more warm and fuzzy about what you're discussing. So yeah. similar when you're in the close, like when you're closing um, high volume and or high value transactions, what grinds my gears and I'll reference, you know, at the moment we are training a, a currency trading firm that in total turns over $9 billion per annum, okay? Um, that organization, the word that they absolutely love to say is that they will lock in. They're gonna lock in the rate. They're gonna lock in the contract. I don't ever want to be locked in to anything. Being locked in makes me feel like I'm behind bars. It makes me feel like I've done something wrong. It's legal, it's binding, it's restrictive, and it makes me feel nervous. If instead of saying lock in, they just change that word for secure, what we're going to do today is secure that rate for you. To be secure makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like I'm at home. It makes me feel like I'm guarded. Opportunity. For sure. Yeah. You know, and, and you take even the word at the end of that, contract. I can't stand that word, right? Neurolinguistically, that is not a powerful word. Instead of saying a contract, which feels like a ream of small print where someone's trying to catch you out, and instead you call it an agreement. Very powerful, neurolinguistically. Change terms like, how long before you'd be able to make a decision? When you ask somebody how long, they start thinking far into the future. If you ask somebody how soon, would they be able to make a decision? Neurolinguistically, you've influenced somebody to start thinking in the present, thinking in the now. Um, we can give you a hundred of those yeah, examples, nice, yeah. um, but if you were to, if you ever take up the opportunity to be in one of our sales boot camps, or alternatively our, our digital um, sales training, then I'm quite confident those types of things will significantly increase your revenue. I'll, I'll give um, give th them one more as a quick takeaway. Yeah. So do, do, you want to, do you want either of these? Which one would suit you best? Really, really simple one. Yeah. Do you want one of these? which one suits you best. Yeah. Let them choose which one suits them best and then sure. ask them why. For sure. Take that all the way to appointment setting, right? You ask a question, so when would you be available? Um, I don't know. Okay, look, looking at our diary, we are pretty busy, but would Tuesday or Wednesday suit you better? Brilliant, would the morning or afternoon be best? Perfect. I could probably squeeze you in at either one or 3.30, which works with your diary better? Constantly giving people A, B options, A, B options, A, B options. As human beings, we like to be able to make a decision based on very clear available options to us. So it's a lot like when I ask my missus, where do you want to go for dinner? She goes, I don't know. Yeah. Or if I said to her, where would you rather go for dinner, the Italian or the Chinese? She's going to pick one of those two options, right? And just a little um, life hack for the boys there. Whoever is struggling with finding out where their missus wants to go for dinner, instead of asking her where does she want to go, instead say to her, guess where we're going for dinner? Well, whatever the first thing she guesses is the place she wants to go, so then just call and book there. <laughs> Works every time. Nice, I like right? it. Um, Danny Yeoman's good to have you with us, um, mate. Hope Jordy Barlow. Well. Hey, Jordy, buddy. Jordy Barlow, pleasure, my friend. You playing, playing football this year, Jordy? Just give us a quick yes or no, mate. I hope you are, mate. Yeah, I'll I hope a, you are. I'll have a left peg on you. Um, and Danny James, mate, oh, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say you're probably still at work and or just finished, mate. I know you're cranking the hours in at the moment. Um, Mate, let us know, how's everything going? Dan's working in the superannuation space. He's helping people with their retirement. Um, so, yeah. He's gonna try, he's gonna try. Yeah, Danny, I'm glad you're gonna try that, mate. Um, also, Cameron, Cameron Ludlam. Glad everything's going Everybody. well with your engagement. Dan, let me know when your wedding is, mate. I actually get married in February next year, so I'm interested to know when you're planning your wedding. Timmy Benson, good to have you. Hope you're staying out of trouble. Um, Jason Hunter, pleasure, mate. Nice to have you with us. I don't know why Cameron's come up there and uh, not on that one. But yeah, Cameron Linda, I do hope you're both okay, mate. Um, give us a shout if you need anything. I know you sat down with Courtney uh, last week, or a couple of weeks ago, was it? Um, I know you've been implementing a few new marketing strategies, so let us know how they're going for yeah. you. Looking forward to catching up with you myself too, Cam. Um, you've been on the tip of everybody's tongue in this office. I feel like I already know you a lot more than I do because everybody's had their two cents worth and kind of filling me in. So um, I know the only time I met you was actually offering you a donut, I think. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so yeah, looking forward to getting to know you properly apart from that um danny james glad you're home now mate all right cool let me know how you're going how are you moving i know the boys you did a 10 million dollar month last month um how are the boys shaping up for for april how's everything going um up there 
Um, Timmy Benson, good on you, bud. James Wood, good to have you with me. James, are you still running your own solar business um, at the moment? James Wood, are you still running your own solar company? Um, and also for anybody that wants to buy luxury watches at all, um, Breitling, Tag, Hublot, um, yeah. Cartier, Rolex. What, what do you um, want? James, no, James is your man. James <laughs> is your man. Um, him and I believe his father also own a luxury watch business. So uh, make sure you reach out to him as well. Easy. Um, question four. Did we answer Magnus? No, we didn't. Because okay. I think he's, this is more so aimed at you because you operate at that different frequency um, <laughs> than everybody else. So how do you stay on such a high frequency consistently without dipping down? Um, Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. Um, first of all, I think you're such a top kid. I just want you to know that. Um, I appreciate your messages that you sent me last week and I'm really excited to keep collaborating as much as is possible. Um, Timmy Benson, what are you actually selling, my friend? I'm glad you're back in sales, glad you're loving it. Um, you're a natural born salesman. If there's anybody I've ever met <laughs> that can talk the back legs off a donkey, it'd be you. Um, but Magnus, how do I stay at this frequency? Look, I'd like to say that it's all strategy, but I do have something called ADD, um, which definitely helps. Um, it means I generally <laughs> vibrate at a slightly different frequency to the average human. Um, it also means that I fall some on something called the Asperger's scale. So. Um, a lot. Some of it's nature, some of it's nurture, but looking at nurture, I'm a big believer that what you put in, you get out. So right now, it is what, 25 to 7, um, this is our 12th hour of the day, and I'm only just hitting form. Like, I'm only literally just now getting into fifth gear um, as we're on this. this Still going? <laughs> Click back in so what you put in you will get out so if you want to look at your eating habits um, I would certainly say start to have higher quality fats and carbs um, would be really really important I mean for me I always start my day by having quite a high calorie intake but I try and make them um, active calories not what I call dead calories so making sure you've got highly alkalized greens a good shake mate barley um, kale, wheatgrass, kiwi fruit, uh, bananas, pineapples, oranges, get that shaken up, get it yourself a Nutribullet mate, they're like $99 these days, get a whole bunch of fruit, veg, salad, um, whip it up into a into a smoothie, get that into you, um, and then maybe even swapping up, and like, I, I, eat, I eat meat for breakfast, a lot of people don't tend to have, you know, um, chicken, steak, um, for breakfast, but I tend to have my dinner at the start of the day and then I have my breakfast at the end of the day So I'll finish my day with oats yogurt fruit instead um, But also training mate like I'm a big believer that the more energy you exert the more energy the universe gives you um, So you'll notice that the people who don't go to the gym are tend to be more sluggish and tired um, I'm also a big believer in not oversleeping. Um, I think six hours for a male is more than adequate sleep. So as long as you are asleep by 10, 30, 11, there's no reason you couldn't be up at 4:35. Um, and I'd say just engage your your your, your metabolism and engage your um, kind of. Um, cardiovascular system as soon as is possible so first thing in the morning try and get a sweat on um, try and get into some cold water um, I love a swim and or a cold shower first thing in the morning um, educate yourself early doors and just be fueled by a why like if yeah that, you, that, that's the most simplistic form for yeah it. if you are ultimately aligned with what you do if you are living your life's purpose and your calling then you'll never need to find energy um, and if ever you feel like your energy levels are dwindling, respect you're a human, you're not a superhuman. Um, rest when you need to, restore when you need to, um, and just optimize every hour that you're applying yourself to, to a task. Yeah, yeah. I think um, in its most simplistic form for me it is, it's just following your passion and doing something that you genuinely enjoy doing. Um, if anybody here will testify, the team, that you can look at Mino Jack's diaries and we are back to back to back to back to back all day, every single day. We're mm -hmm. on the road. You guys have probably seen it. We're flying down to Sydney. We're flying down to Melbourne. But this isn't a job because we really do it. Uh, we really enjoy doing it, mm. and we get instant gratification. We can do one coaching with somebody that, mm -hmm. that says that they're not in sales. We're all in sales. Everybody knows that, um, and we can get instant results the next day, if not the same day. And that's that fuels me. Um, it fuels me an awful lot. So I, I do jump about a bed um, in the morning, and I do think I can genuinely change somebody's life today. So that's, that's fun. So amongst all the yeah, eat well, do all that stuff. Um, but that's just. Look after yourself. That should just be part and parcel of living living a good life. Um, but truly following your passion and doing something you enjoy, I think that's really, really important to stay motivated. For sure. Um, Ivan Lotti, the Italian yeah. stallion. Good yeah. to have you with me. Thank, thank you, Ivan. Yeah. What a legend. I've got a funny feeling you're talking about his hair and not mine. I've got a pretty bog standard haircut. Um, he He's, that, he that did was, have his he had his haircut for this live just about half have, an hour ago. I did have my haircut yeah. today. Um, but that, that quiff has a little bit less height than it normally does. Less height, does it? Yeah, yeah I'd say it normally got an extra inch or two on it. But 
Um, I've heard you fall an inch or two short from time to time. Um, Daniel James, mate, what's your best advice on getting out of a slump when your numbers take a hit or a dip? Um, for me, it, I go to the same response every single time, back to basics. Yeah. Go back to... <coughs> We've all been there, firstly. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, some less than others, and I guess it's not about the slump. Um, I always revert back to Muhammad Ali. A champion is not judged on how hard he falls, a champion is judged by how quickly he can get back up. So hitting a slump is fine. Number one, identifying you're in it, and then number two, getting using methodology to get out of it, I think is highly important. So for me, back to basics. Um, one thing that we know about sales is there's a point in the first three to four weeks where people start to make high volumes of sales because all they know is the fundamental basics of what their product or service offers. Yeah. Um, remember that people buy people before they ever buy a product. So get back to selling Dan. Um, I've got a funny feeling you're probably selling superannuation rollovers. Um, people don't buy superannuation rollovers. What people buy is the lifestyle that, super, that their superannuation is going to create for them. So stop selling the what, start selling the why. Stop selling the product, start selling yourself. And most importantly, mate, go back to basics. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, you've got, I know full well, the gentleman, uh, Mitch Couture, who's written your script is one of the most successful salespeople, not just on the Gold Coast, but in Australia. Um, the script is highly effective. Um, get back to basics, start compounding value thereafter. That'd be my advice. Yeah, no, no, I comp completely agree. I think um, it's undoubtedly in, in this industry, you're going to go through a bit of a slump. I think back in the day, I went six weeks or something without getting a deal at one stage. And it, it does make you question everything. I was rewriting my script every single day. Um, what I realized was, although I was really good at the back end of the script, I was really good at booking the appointment or closing the sale. I forgot the fundamentals of opening a call um, and my, my 1.48 seconds face to face, my 4.5 seconds over the phone, it was all over the place. Um, I wasn't sharp, I wasn't enthusiastic, I wasn't professional, my tone was everywhere. So back to basically literally means go all the way back to your opening line of your script because that will make or break whatever, you, not even just your script, but in any sort of negotiation situation. And the, the skills that we talk about and, and the training that we provide, the sales training, negotiation training, however you want to terminize it, it's not just about selling over the phone or selling face to face. You, whether you're gonna buy a house one day or sell a house, buy a car, sell a car, you're negotiating in some way, shape or form. So hopefully these skills that we're talking about and these tools, they're resonating with, with everybody, whether you're in sales per se or not. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so. And I think, yeah. again, the final thing I'll say on that then, Dan, is just recognize that 90% of your ability to, in, to inspire or influence a customer over the telephone is the tone of your voice. So don't even stress too much about what you are saying. As I say, go back to the script, utilize the words, but focus more on how it is being delivered. One thing I know about you is you have fantastic curiosity to your questioning, fantastic eye care when focusing on pain or a problem, but make sure we have that mirrored enthusiasm at the front door so if you can remember down i taught you the pace pace lead come in 10 percent above the customer use your closed questions and the affirmations to those closed questions to steal enthusiasm but most importantly when you reach the buying line slow it down minimize the words less is more and just calm collectively ask the customer for their business and then if you have to start your rejection handling processes from there um, who we got? Ivan Light, very inspiring guys. Love to hear your passion, by the way, both of you. <laughs> <Yeah, we're amazing. laughs> cheers, cheers, Ivan, Ivan, where are you, mate? Are you still here in Australia? If you are, are you still in the hospitality industry? Um, are you still playing football? Um, if not, if you're in Italy, um, when can I come over and <laughs> stay with you? Um, Alicia, Alicia the eyes are watching. We, we, can, we, 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 we can see you. We see you. Um, all right, next question. Uh, what types of sales training are there and what do you think is the best way to learn? Um, I'm not sure if that's in, in general or, or does that mean who sent that? Is that what we teach sales training wise or overall? In general. So, yeah. Go on, you go. Well, look, there's, there, there's lots of different um, sales concepts or sales training. I mean, um, looking back, we've probably done close to a couple of dozen different sales training programs. So the likes of Simon Sinek, Jeremy Miner, Bill Brighton, um, Zig Ziglar, um, Brian Tracy, Jordan Balfour, Anthony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Kerwin Ray, um, on, the list can keep yeah. going. Um, so there are lots of different sales training out there, but what I often find, what disappoints me in a lot of those circumstances, is they're often regurgitations of the exact same content. Sure. Um, what I love about our sales training program, the Swish sales training method and the negotiation ladder that underpins that, it is, is that it is 100% original. It was custom designed and it is fundamentally a hybrid version of all other sales training methodology that exists. So um, in terms of the training, I mean, there's obviously one-to-one -one, um, training, there's, 
um, classroom and boot camp style training. There's in-house inside your business or corporate based training um, and most commonly in the modern day and where a lot of people are starting to lean is that um, they are wanting to take on board digital sales training. But um, if I, I kind of don't really context the question, but yeah, kind of it rolls into the, the previous question about what, sure. what, what do you prefer and what styles do you like? Um, for me, I I do it. I do everything. I, I read. I listen to audio books. Um, I listen to podcasts. Um, I've paid tens of thousands of dollars on on education myself. Um, I, I think it was one of my mentors said to me, "The only thing that that cannot ever be taken away from you is the knowledge um, that that you have." So for yeah. me. My mantra, everybody kind of knows, I kind of talk about it all the time, is always go to bed more educated than when you woke up. Um, so if you're laying in bed at night and you don't feel you've learned something today, then jump on your phone, we can learn something very, very quickly. Um, it's a, a click of a fingertip. So this, yeah, find the style that suits you. Um, well, the style that suits me is not gonna suit everybody. The style that suits Jack's not gonna suit everybody. Um, we've looked at Grant Cardone, we've looked at Jordan Belfort. Whatever you think about it, it suits somebody. It's still selling for out sure, there. Um, sure. We've got opinions on it, whether we offer them yeah. or not, I'm not yeah. sure. I, I think when it comes to sales styles, um, Ryan's highly consultative. So Ryan works on a process of guided discovery. He asks you really effective, big picture questions to get you to self-analyze become self-aware and find your own why. Now you have your why, he, asks, he will ask you, what is the what, the how, the who, and the when that connects to why you're wanting to do this? And it works for him. Just, and just break that down quickly into, if, if you want a quick tip on that, it's just broken down into PSQ. So it's problem, solution, question. So I'll spend a good 75, 80, 85% of my time during a consultation genuinely trying to get down, deep down into the root cause of people's problems. And so people won't even realize they have a problem. That's where your skilled questioning comes in and you've got to be able to open them up. So always giving something to take something. Once I have your problem, I will offer a solution based around the problems that you have. If my solution doesn't suit your problem, I'm gonna shake your hand and wish you all the best and send you to somebody else that can solve your problem. And I think that's where the swish method comes in, selling with integrity, selling honestly, and then we finish with the cue, which is the question. So based around everything that we've discussed together today, the fact that you're struggling with this, 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 and this, and we have the answers here, 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 and here, why don't we do this? Why don't we grab the bull by the horns, get you started today, and start seeing those results that you desperately need. Sound fair? And that would be my PSQ side type of yeah, method. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely a little bit different to that. Um, although I will always complete a consultation, so I will always make sure that there's a discovery where I take the time to analyze you as a client, your wants, your needs, your fears, your desires. Once I start my presentation, once I deliver my first feature and my first benefit, my intention is to never allow you to use more than one word. Ideally, that word will just be the word yes before I have the opportunity for the first time to ask you to do business with me. So I'm very assumptive. I use a lot of authority. Um, I dominate the conversation with high levels of control. Um, and again, that's my style. That's Ryan's style. They both work. Um, there, are, uh, there are a magnitude of other ways to be able to do this passively, submissively, through shadow selling, um, through story-based or third-party reference selling. So there's a whole range of different ways, and I think to become a highly effective salesperson, to master your craft, you need to have all of those in your arsenal, yep. because Post Theory says to us that there will be four major motivators for any consumer to take action. It will be the price, the outcome, the service, or the efficiency. Until I understand where you fall on Pose, I don't know how to sell to you. Um, and I guess why I, what took me to the next level as a salesperson from going to being a million dollar a year salesperson to you know over a hundred million dollars that we did in sales last year was because we stopped making people buy the way that we sold and we started to sell to people the way that they prefer to buy um, because in essence everybody loves buying we're the heaviest consuming generation that's ever existed but people do absolutely hate being sold to so um, instead of selling, just become an assistant buyer, help them to buy what they want, how they want, um, but utilizing negotiation, influencing tools to do that, yeah, for and sure. The, and the only, way, the only way you can find out what they want is by asking them the right questions in the first place. Um, and then the question, second part of that question, what, what do we think is the best way to learn? Um, again, every, everybody's different. You, can, you fall generally into one of 
three categories, your kinesthetic, your audio, or your visual. You would tend to have a primary and a secondary. Um, but if I'm talking for myself, the two ways that I learn is through repetition. Um, I need to do something 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 times over. Um, with repetition builds familiarity. With familiarity comes my confidence. Um, but also I love an acronym. Um, hmm. I always find I remember something when I create an acronym around it. Um, and I also love very practical based learning. I'm much better at seeing something than hearing something. When I see it, I believe it. And when I believe it, I have the ability to action it. That would be me. Yeah. Um, audio. I'm, I'm, I'm consuming an awful lot of audio on Audible um, at the moment. I feel like that's really resonating with me. But there's nothing better than being next to somebody, seeing somebody get the results and then trying to replicate that and getting on, on the spot coaching. Um, for me, that, that works. That's just on a personal level. works really well for me. Some of, some of our clients, they don't want that human interaction. They get really nervous when we're shadowing them and sitting behind them or barging their phone calls. And mm -hmm. they, they log into their digital training and they watch the same training module that I taught them that day and they get a better result because they're not so nervous. So yeah. everybody's slightly different. Yeah, I for think. sure. Um, ben Evans, you're asking, what is our favorite book on personal growth? Um, mate, personal growth is such a broad yeah. term. So. Um, if you're talking to me about personal growth from a financial perspective, um, T. Harv Eker, Millionaire Mindset, um, Noel Whitaker, Golden Rules of Wealth. If you're talking about personal growth from a communicative fashion, um, for me, Dale Carnegie, How yeah. to Win Friends and Influence People. That's my number one. If you're talking from a business development perspective, um, John McGraw, You Incorporated, or You Inc., I think is a really powerful piece of literature. Um, if you're talking about personal growth from a mindset perspective, um, I absolutely love and, and, and laud a book by a lady called Ilana Van Zant, which is one day my soul just opened up. Um, if you're looking at more from finding your career, um, I'd probably recommend um, What Colors My Parachute. Um, if you're looking towards, again, financial, maybe Dr. Spencer Johnson, Who Moved My Cheese. Um, if you're looking from a leadership perspective, um, one Minute Manager, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's a good, good piece of literature. Um, I don't think um, I like the one, one that I've just picked up this week, I say picked up, um, listen, listened up on, on Audible, um, is Oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley. Um, really changing my mindset around the people that we are working with. Um, we're pretty fortunate, and um, the, the guys that have seen the business over the last four years, you will have seen the growth and what, what's happened with the business. Don't need to go too much into that. Um, that we're in a fortunate position now where we can pick and choose our clients an awful lot more. So we can do a genuine, almost an interview um, to decide whether we want to work with you. And if at the end of that consultation, we don't believe that we're gonna be able to assist you mm -hmm. and show you the type of growth that we're projecting. Um, at the minute, we've got an average increase in revenue of 41% for, for businesses and individuals that we work with. If we don't feel we're going to be able to hit that, we can turn you away. So to be oversubscribed is to have that mindset from <clears throat> from day dot. So almost act like you've you've made it before. And I'm not a big subscriber to faking it before you make it, but just, just think who do you specifically want to work with? Who is your ideal client avatar? Because they are going to give you the most satisfaction because they're going to give you the most um, investment of their time um, and they're gonna be motivated to learn. So they'll implement and they'll execute and then they will go forth and get those results. Yeah. So um, really, really good read actually. I think I'm there's listening. a difference between fake it before you until you make it and what I call manifestation. So going back yeah. to neuro-linguistic programming, um, the Law of Attraction, um, this would be another book for you, mate. Um, Rhonda Byrne or Bob Proctor, um, Bob The Law Proctor. of Attraction or The Secret, are really powerful books about mindset and attitude. Um, but for me, manifestation is very different. When you say, I will, I have, I'm, I'm doing, and you talk about the future like it's the present, it moves closer towards you. So I think there's a big difference about lying and saying, I'm a millionaire or I own a business yeah. or I'm doing X, right? There's a big difference between bullshitting and forward manifesting something that is an inevitable um, and that you are creating framework to so that the clearer the picture, the clearer the vision, the easier it is to hit the milestones or the goals on the road to that vision. And, and that, that, that's key, um, I think, with, with executing on the back of the words that you're verbalizing as well. If you're one of those people that keeps telling people, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be a business owner, that's, that's all well and good, but you're actually not taking action to do any of it. Mm -hmm. So we always say knowledge is not power, knowledge is potential power. Action's action power. is power. So if, you, if you're that person and you do keep saying that, all of a sudden people, they, they get over it. And, and you're that person that just cries wolf mm -hmm. all the time. So if you're, if you're talking and you're manifesting, you truly want to make something happen, remove the excuses and take action. Because 
we're, we're living, breathing proof that, that it, it can happen. We are not, I'll, I'll put us both in this category, we're not the most intelligent people in the world. We are not, but we truly... I'm, I'm, not even, I'm, I'm the not. third most intelligent person in this room. You can only see two of us, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so... If you genuinely put your mind to something and you actually take action, but you, do, you don't have to get it right. You just have to get started. And that's all we've done. We've got started. We had a vision. We've got a vision. We're not where we want to be right now. And we've, we're still manifesting. But trust me, behind the scenes, we're getting closer every single For day. For sure. I mean, look, th this business, we look at this business and people, I think, sometimes assume we're a little bit bigger than we are. Like We, we are, only do a million dollars or a year in revenue at present, right? Which is not... It's not massive by any stretch of the imagination, but when we manifest that we are the number one sales training organization in the world, when we manifest that we have 1,000 businesses subscribed to our digital content, which creates a revenue for us of $12.5 million per year, we don't say that lightheartedly. We're not saying it to impress you, and we're not saying it because it's a pipe dream. We're saying it because we have a strategic action plan on how in the next 12 to 18 months we go forth and achieve those things. So, um, This yeah. live video is part of that plan. For sure. Everything we do, it's every minute of every hour of every day is calculated For sure. on how we're going to achieve that moving mm. forward. Um, All right, um, eight minutes, two big questions. Big high fives there from Holly, good stuff. And um, Ben Evan said mindset. Um, is, are you requesting a book on mindset? Yeah. Um, so for me, mate, it's quite got quite a religious connotation to it, but Ilana Van Zant one day, my just soul just opened up, but I'd say the perfect place to start, if you look at the, what I call the LeBron James or the Conor McGregor mindset, um, get started with um, Rhonda Byrne, Bob Proctor, um, Law of Attraction and The Secret, mate, that'd be a fantastic place to start, for sure. Okay, eight minutes. Um, is there specific sales training for real estate agents? And does it differ from other sales because of how much money is being transacted? Um, we're in the real estate industry as well. As you guys probably already know, that um, Jack and I own a, another organization, investment um, property organization called Corwood & Associates. Um, in my opinion, no. I don't know where you're going to go with this, but um, sales is sales is sales. Business is business is business. The product and service are the same. It, do, it, do, it doesn't matter. You're the individual that is the variable. So firstly, you've just got to sell yourself. If you sell yourself, they're going to be listening to you. If they listen to you, you can then present your product or service and build that level of trust. So um, monetary values, I've sold everything from $9 pens all the way up to million dollar properties. Like my, my process is that I just follow the 12 step negotiation ladder. It doesn't mm -hmm. I don't know if you've got anything to add or add with um, Jane Noel, good to have you with me. Um, Jane, I've been following you on Facebook and all your home renovations. I um, hope they're going well. Same regards to Rodney. Um, give us a quick note. What are you doing at the moment, Jane? Graham Charlton, good to have you. I think you were up on the coast at the weekend causing some mayhem. Yeah, I've seen his haze party look pretty stop good. Stop coming up here, causing Tornado Charlton, and then popping back to Sydney and leaving us to clean up the mess, okay? Um, also, Brad Lamb, good to have you with me, mate. Hope you're well. Um, any questions far away? Um, <laughs> okay. Me and Ryan don't agree on much most of the time. Um, is there specific sales training for real estate agents? Absolutely, there is. Um, I look at the training that I delivered today. It's funny enough, I was actually teaching um, sales training for real estate agents today with an organization called Certainty Wealth. Um, I believe it is different because I think it is far more of an emotional sale. Um, lot, some products are very logical. They'll go with investment properties and then... Yeah, like for, yeah. For, for, for me, when you say is there specific sales training for real estate agents, yes, I think there's also specific training for um, what I would call residential, traditional residential agents that are helping Mr. and Mrs. Smith to sell their house through um, private treaty or through auction um, to prospective buyers in the local area, as there is selling an investment property um, to maybe an interstate or an international um, investor. So when it comes to property investing, people very rarely buy bricks and mortar. They're not buying the color of a roof. They're not buying tiles. They're not buying a size of a property. What they're buying is an investment value against a rental, rental return and a capital growth potential. So in that circumstance, it's very logical, it's very numbers orientated, mm -hmm. and what you're selling far more than the actual product is the company and yourself. Whereas when you're selling somebody a property that they're going to live in, especially a first home buyer, somebody who is going on to make what is inevitably the biggest decision of their life so far, um, so there much. is far more emotion attached to it. It needs to be in the right area. It needs to have the right size block. It needs to have the right amount of bathrooms, the right size kitchen. It needs to get enough sunlight. So in that circumstance, again though, you're not actually selling the property. What you're selling is the outcome or the experiences. You're selling those long, 
Saturday afternoons having a barbecue by the pool. You're selling those wet, windy winter days when we're all in the cinema room together as a family watching a movie. You're selling dinner parties where you're entertaining friends yeah. um, in your open plan kitchen living space. So Just even, even, even relating that to, to what we do here, we're not, we don't sell sales training. We don't sell business corporate coaching or, or sales training boot camps. We sell the, the outcome of what that training can provide for you. So you guys want sales training because you want to make more sales. You want business coaching because you want your business to grow. You want to increase revenue because you want to scale yourself out of the business so you stop working in it so you can spend more time with your friends, your family, your kids, etc. whatever it is. That's what you're selling. For sure. I don't think I've ever sold a, a solar panel. I don't think I've ever sold insurance. I don't think anybody's ever sold a sales training program. That might be the physical object that you receive, yeah. but what you are buying is the emotion that that product then gives you on the Definitely. back end of it as Definitely. well. So. I mean, I'm sitting here, as a lot of people will know, my background was in solar. Um, it's really where I kind of made my career here in Australia when I first came over, was in the solar power industry for just over three years. and. I was fortunate enough in my career in the business that I started and grew to sell over a hundred million dollars worth of residential and commercial solar power systems but to this day I have never ever sold a solar panel not once because nobody buys solar panels the same as nobody actually buys a reduction in their electricity bill what they buy is more cash capital at their disposal and it's not to save money it's to have more money to spend so I've sold a lot of private school fees, holidays, car upgrades, new kitchens, new bathrooms, but I've never ever sold a solar panel. And I think that's the biggest mistake of salespeople in their entirety, and real estate agents especially, is they sell houses. They're not selling the reason the person's buying yeah. a house in the first place. So is there specific sales training for real estate agents? Yes, um, but is 80% of it still sales is sales is sales? Absolutely, it's just understanding how to best present that presentation. Um, or that product or service. Yeah, and I think in, in general, I think that the process for me, I mean, I've, we've got florists, we've got landscape gardeners, we've got plumbers, and then we've got $9 billion a year companies. So the the, the framework is always the same, changes. and the product and service will, will change slightly and we'll adapt the training in and around it, which is pretty cool. Definitely. Um, oh, there you go, Cameron, good timing, mate. Um, what about the service industry, car repair? When should our sales start? When the car gets dropped off or when we ring them with things we have found that need repair? And how do we approach it when they say no to the repair? And um, when does the sales process start? When you first make contact with yeah. them um, instantaneously. You've got 1.48 seconds on a face face-to-face -face basis, um, Cameron, you probably get an inquiry over the phone before that. Your yeah. sales starts right then, the second you yep. pick up the phone. Good afternoon, Cam, Cam's Car Care. Mate, I'm not interested in your business. You sound bored to tears, you're not gonna be invested in me as a person. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Cam's Car Care, how can I help? Slight difference there. I wanna now talk to you, you sound enthusiastic, you sound like you enjoy your job. If you enjoy your job, you're probably going to look after your clients as well. So your, your, your sale, or your customer service, your wow factor, we call, call it, starts instantly, the very second. Sure. Our best salesperson in our whole company, um, some people are gonna hate me for this, is Courtney. She's our digital marketing manager. Half the time she sets up her office, she doesn't need to do this, but she sets up her office on the reception desk at the front. Best salesperson because she's the first person people see when they walk through our front door. Yeah. If she's not smiling, that is the whole impression of the company done. But it's even one step further than that for me. The sale starts when they find your webpage. Yeah, the so, sale yeah. starts when they type in um, Car Care Gold Coast and they see the reviews about you. Cam's so, Car Care Gold Coast, for yeah. anybody watching. There so you, go, you, you might actually have, your sale will have started before you've ever even had the opportunity to humanistically interact. So um, just be mindful of that. You know, the social media content that you project um, all the way through to your website itself, the reviews about you online, your position on Google, um, your name, your number, um, your address being openly available, um, all of those things in her personal brand as well guys as well it's something we, we have to think about um, you can find out anything about anybody these days I'm sure the majority of you I know some of you are prospective clients you've come in you've had coaching with us you might have just been feeling us out you will have searched us you'll have searched my LinkedIn page and Jack's LinkedIn page and so on and so forth just make sure that personal brand is strong and it's aligned with what you're putting out all the time yeah. you know I and mean? it has to be a consistent message to market and we've only got two minutes left um, Cam so in a, a very um, kind of brief overview to, to the question that you've asked. Um, the consultation happens when they drop the car off. That moment you're talking about when you give them a call and you say what 
um, actual servicing is required. That's your presentation. So you need to not focus that on the features, you need to focus it on the benefits. So don't focus it on, um, you need new brake pads. Okay, how much are they gonna be? What I'd love to do, and it's totally up to you if you decide to take advantage of this, but would be to put new brake pads because if you're doing a lot of city driving, especially in problem areas such as the Sundale Bridge where you live in Southport, if you have to apply the, apply the brakes on your car quickly, I wanna make sure we're protecting the lives of your children in the back seats and that's what's important to me. Suddenly, you're not selling me brake pads, you're selling me safety for my kids. Okay, well now I'm in, now I'm sold. Exactly the same on the front end, it's, it's, it's quite ironic actually. I've got Holly on here um, and I've got Cameron and it's just joined Autoguru as well as a mechanic. So you've got both ends of the spectrum. So Holly, you might speak to Cameron one day. <laughs> um, and she's, she's just made a comment there saying so many workshops don't even say the name of the business when answering the phone. So um, if you want that for validation, um, Cameron, make, make sure you, you pick up the phone with a smile on your face as well, yourself or Linda. Um, and I know, I know you do anyway. For sure. Yeah. Um, all right, final question. Um, what is business coaching? What does that really mean? <laughs> um, I love the fact that that question's phrased that way because every Everybody's a business coach these oh, days. Everyone's a coach. It's so funny that people fresh out of school, fresh out of university, start a business coaching firm, yet they've never had a business. Their business is them. They don't have one staff member, yet they're teaching you how to scale an organization, how to man manage and to lead with no tangible experience in doing so. So for me, what is business coaching? Business coaching is an individual or organization that is giving you practical, tangible advice that's gonna help you to start, grow, or sell your business. From a strategic level in terms of um, digital or multimedia marketing, all the way through to product and service development, and then more on an operational level with things like recruitment, um, man management, HR, payroll, taxation, um, but long story short, what is business coaching? Business coaching is a service that helps you to become more consciously aware of how to start, grow, or sell a business, and the only people you should be taking business coaching from are people that are tried and tested with being there and done that experience. If they don't have runs on the board either by owning a business coaching organization that has a magnitude of staff and services the whole nation and is doing multi-million dollars in revenue and or alternatively um, if they are don't have testimonial based outcomes with sizable organizations that have seen upside from utilizing their service then I, I, I'd avoid it um, you know there is so sure. much free content out there and a lot of these low-level business coaches are regurgitating that information and charging a premium for it so I'll add one word onto that as well accountability um, if you come under mine or Jack's guidance um, one thing that we will make sure we do is give you a bit of a kick up the arse so if we're gonna sit down and we're gonna put together a strategic action plan on how to grow your business um, whether it be through sales or specific business coaching and um, we are going to hold you accountable to that as well and that's where our initial consultation is very very important we've got to be able to read you we've got to want to work with you and, and vice versa it's got to work both ways mm -hmm. um, and if we don't believe that you're going to be somebody that is going to execute and implement we probably will send you away we before won't. you even get a chance because we live and breathe that statistic we can say in no uncertain terms that the businesses we coach in either sales and or business dynamics will increase their bottom line revenue by 41% in 92 days. If we think you're not gonna implement the information that we give, we give you, then unfortunately you're gonna affect that statistic. So we would rather not do business with you at all because having those tangible statistics <coughs> generates us a lot more revenue long term than just obtaining your business today. Um, final question then, Chad Pallet. Um, Chad, I, I don't know if I've ever met you um, before, but um, an absolute pleasure to have you with us um, today. You say, what is the cost? Now, I'm not sure how long you've been in this video, but we were talking earlier about something called neuro-linguistic programming, okay? So one thing that we'll never ever use is the word cost. There's no such thing as a cost. Um, we utilize the word investment, um, because a cost is something that requires an input of finance and potentially you never see anything back from, like your electricity bill, your phone bill, or taxes. Um, an investment is something you take, put an investment into or a financial um, capacity into, and although it's one step back, it gives you two, three, four steps forward. So um, what is the investment? Um, I'm not sure if it's referring not. to Cam's Car Care or yeah, to not. us. Um, mate, we're coming right to the back end of this video, so if that's in regards to the services that we offer, um, we do not have a cookie cutter or one size fits all program. It would really depend on what services you wanted to utilize, and before we would ever suggest to you the investment you would require, we'd wanna get to know you, spend half an hour, 45 minutes dissecting who you are, 
um, and what challenges you're facing before we can even advise whether we can have a solution to that challenge. And only if we do have a solution to that challenge and you're morally and ethically aligned with who we are as people, um, would we present a proposition to you which would have an investment amount attached to it. Awesome. You make a great politician. Um, okay, um, guys, um, enjoyed that. Um, thank you very much for, for questions. Jack has is six minutes over for his next um, appointment, mm -hmm. so we're going to sign off. Um, any questions, fire them in and we'll answer them next time. Cheers.